Greetings and salutations. Welcome to GameSpot's live show, GS Live. I'm your host, Kurt Navina, and we are being joined by a couple cool people, Audrey and Emmerich, who are the developers of Karen. And joining me also is one, tomorrow who's- Climbing enthusiast. Yes, climbing enthusiast. No, I've never climbed anything in my life. It's, we live in San Francisco, and it's uh, uh, going, to, uh, going to get your newspaper, which is a thing that only <laughs> I do. Uh, it, requires, it requires a steep hill, in which I get to the top of it, and my legs are shaking, and I scream at the top of my lungs, um, which is exactly what this trailer showed off that we got to see yesterday. Yeah. So way to go, and welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Happy to be here. Yeah. Uh, so, of course, this is a much more mellow vibe than being on stage mm. at Summer Game Fest. But what, uh, I guess, like, for those who haven't seen the game, um, kick it off. Who wants, who wants to give the old... The, old, the elevator pitch. The, the, uh, cool. the, the mountain climb pitch. Can do that. <laughs> well, so, uh, Karen, is a, it's a climbing game, as uh, you, you've seen. Um, it's a game where you have to reach the summit of a mountain that nobody reached before. It's uh, also a game about what it means to try such uh, an ascent uh, in terms of sacrifices mm -hmm. and uh, risks. And it's very, very unique and new. Uh, we call it a survival climber because there is parts of the mechanics are survival, but also the climbing is the challenge mm. compared to other games where there was climbing here the controller is unique and you are actually climbing pretty much anything in the game uh, in a completely new way mm. the first time i saw the trailer um you know i, I already made a joke about it but like the shaking limbs yeah uh and like there's there's been climbing games like i feel that have come out and there's like there's there's been an array of them over the past few years which is an interesting thing in of itself but the one thing that your trailer did to me was like actually cause like almost like a visceral stressful reaction. Yes, a feeling of dread. Yes, of like just watching this this knee like just just barely hold on to be able to get to the next step. Um, and I don't know, it's just like it's very effective. I haven't even played it. Yeah. And actually, we have uh, asked people to play it. Of course, like we, have, we did play tests, and uh, they they very quickly start to sweat. <laughs> they, <laughs> like, they are, get sweaty hands and uh, so uh, I guess, yeah, it translates well into the gameplay. Yeah, well. the one thing I want to ask about, and I notice you keep saying mountain, is it just one mountain that you climb? Or is there like a series of challenges? It's, so there is like the big story mode. Mm -hmm. It's one adventure. There is a story uh, and one big mountain to climb. Right. But then there is another game mode where you can uh, ascend different, uh, right. several other mountains uh, yeah. without story and more like a... Yeah, I find it fascinating that it's the, the uh, single player part or the story part of it is one specific mountain. It kind of speaks to a lot of the nuance and the intricacy of moving up and up that thing. It can't, it's not something you can, it's not like a level that you complete in one shot and then move on with. So what is it along the way that kind of like resets it? Is it just simply a case of like you don't have the facilities to make it or is it you're physically not capable tools? How do you kind of have that progression to it? Uh, well, uh, if you die, you're pretty much... Uh, yes, yeah, that is definitely a <laughs> stopper for it. <laughs> yeah, but it's... Uh, it's um, so you, in the game you have to manage your, uh, your health, mm -hmm. but also your uh, hunger, thirst, cold, right. your resources, pitons. Uh, you have to rest when you need to, mm. um, and and you see your progression uh, in the game. Uh, it's been shown, I think, in uh, one of the videos in Day of the Dev that we've shown. Mm. You see your progress. You see where you've been, mm. uh, where it was difficult, where it was uh, easy, where you planted a piton, where you fell mm. and fell and fell and yeah. fell, <laughs> and then you um, you can really see your uh, your own gameplay story, hmm. the thing that you want to tell to your friends, that's where I, I'm playing. <laughs> and because it's very open, it's, uh, it's really up to you to choose your route and it's completely, we, we don't even know all the, the way to climb the mountain. Oh, it's interesting. So open that we, it's very, yeah, hard in level design. Yeah. 
And, and it's also a very, very big mountain. Yeah, so yeah. You have different phases. You know, you, you start. It uh, looks like a small mountain, and then you go into zones that are harder, steeper, and then at the top you have the snow area and all of those. So it's like mm. a really long way yeah. up to the top of the mountain, about maybe ten or twelve hours. Wow, that is yeah. Are you are you a climber? We, we're not actually <laughs> climbers, both of us. But my dad was a mountain climber, but, um, but we we have studied a lot. We have talked to a lot of uh, specialists, uh, some climbers, some so people who have done... So you haven't actually like, become a climber in the process <laughs> of making the climbing game? Actually, half of the team, uh, but half of the team has, oh, wow. has started yeah. climbing since we started the, the game. And... Uh, so like at the shaking... Yeah, they, they, <laughs> they, they understand. <laughs> I think I've become very uh, yeah, aware of all the, the techniques and vocabulary, mm. but uh, I still have to... To, to reach my first uh, 8,000. How did you, I imagine because you've spoken to a lot of climbers, how did you, was it a case of like translating kind of the mental challenges into gameplay mechanics? How do you approach that element of it? Because physically, I guess it being reductive here, it's probably easier to translate that into video game mechanics than it is like the mental kind of challenges you face internally and struggling to keep that going. How did you work to do that? Oh, yeah, well, actually uh, we, we spoke to uh, one of the most famous uh, women climber in the world mm. who did uh, several uh, 8,000 oh, wow. uh, ascents and who had a tragic, uh, like her partner uh, didn't make mm. it through an ascent. And it was really, really inspiring to listen to her talking about that, talking about why she climbed and what she keeps climbing after that mm. and what she's looking for and that's what we wanted to talk about uh, mm -hmm. in the game in our previous games we were looking at freedom living free in fury mm. uh, being able to love who we want in haven mm. and now it's more uh, what are you how do you achieve freedom by doing this kind of yeah. completely crazy ascent yeah yeah, it is putting yourself through some of the most rigorous challenges a human can face to try and find the kind of like burst through to find that freedom. That's really interesting. From a mechanical perspective, I don't want to assume how it's played. Can you explain how you physically move the character around? Or is it just like, you know, grabbing? And yeah, moving? sure. So that's uh, the unique twist of the game hmm. is um, it's you, you can climb everywhere because there is no uh, uh, animation system. It's all all math. Mm -hmm. It's all um, just like biomechanics, oh. and you control each limb. So what left hand, right hand, and both right. both legs. But it doesn't feel awkward because we found found a, <laughs> a cheat. <laughs> the system decides which limb is going to move. So depending on if you have all your weight on one leg, obviously it's not going to take this one. <laughs> right. It's going to take the, the, the most uh, interesting limb to move. So you just move your left stick and you press a button to grab or put right. your, uh, your limb on, the, on the, the wall, and that's it. That's fascinating. No animation system. Yeah. That's, that's very unique. That's, I guess, something that distinguishes it from a lot of other climbing games or most games as well. Was that tricky to get to that point to find that system? Three year tricky. Three years, wow. <laughs> okay, yeah. I mean, yeah. it seems like that's the spine of the game, yeah. like the, the ability to climb and move. There's also the segment where, like, you can do like push ups. Is that something also, like, you know, not an animation based thing? Like, you're going to be, like, are you, how do you control that? Is it, I mean, is that, <laughs> are you going to be going up and down on a joystick to be able to, uh, to, to push through? No, so the, the push ups is, uh, so be, you can uh, stop at uh, create a bivouac, like mm. a camp. Mm. And that's up to you. But when you do that, uh, you have several things that you can do during camp. You can uh, repair some of your uh, gear. You can cook, which is basically boiling rice or mm. noodles. Um, and you can uh, tape your fingers and also obviously sleep or wait for, I don't know, some kind of a storm to, okay. to, to pass. So awesome. during this sequence, if you choose to wait for a couple of hours, she's going to uh, yeah, keep training. Mm. I, want, I wanted to ask something about it uh, narratively, but first, the, the name, Karen. What is it? 
Is it a French word? Is it a name? Is it a mountain? Is it a place? Can you say? Yeah, I, I think it's a French word, but I don't think it's only a French word. It's mm. actually uh, the name of those little uh, piles of stones that uh, climbers ah. and oh. uh, people on the trek do to mark the fact that a human has been here to show a path. It's also some form of uh, sepulture that you can put to, uh, on a grave. Hmm. It has also a lot of religious connotation in Tibet okay. or Nepal. Right. So uh, it is an existing thing that uh, you will find anywhere where humans have been in the mountain or in the wild. So it's, it's, it's say, really emblematic here. of like of people going someplace, of like going to unknown territory yeah. exactly. in a way that you can see like someone's been here by these yeah, Exactly, these going where people have never been and leaving uh, a trace of it. Yes, a testament to human achievement. Yeah. I had something that was in our previous game. For each game, we had something in Fury in Avon where you leave your own mm -hmm. trace. You say, I've been there. It was uh, in all, all uh, the three games. And like talking about um, uh, like, people and these it's the i don't believe the character speaks in the trailer just screams and grunts and like the the screams are like so guttural they're so good like that's the main thing the trailer has like really shown off to me great like, scream tech yeah it's good great job. scream tech great shaky limb tech it's like it's like it's hitting on that like you're really uh it's not just like a typical climbing game in the sense that or feels this way at least where you're just like not overcoming an obstacle yeah it feels you're, emotional it's it feels really emotional yeah. well i'm very happy you're pointing to it because we actually have a very strong audio team. You know, awesome. the, the people yeah. behind uh, Fury and Heaven have done, are, do, are working on Cairn, hmm. but we brought on some, some new talent. And we were like, with them, we were like, who do we want to do the audio of that game? Because the audio is going to be so important because mm. you're behind your character on mm. the face in front of a mountain for the whole game. So it has to sound great. Mm. It has to convey the gameplay, but also the emotions. And we're like, we should work with Martin Stig Anderson, who is the guy who did the audio of uh, Limbo, Control, oh. Inside. Oh, oh I mean, audio director. some of the best sound exactly. games, basically. So, so we wrote to him and he said, yes, I have to do this game. I, I want to do it. Awesome. And then we were like super happy. Yeah. And then like a few months later, he's like, we need reinforcement. And I'm thinking we should bring on Julian. And then we realized it's uh, Julian who's worked on Cocoon on the audio oh, design. Oh, wow, so wow, okay. that is an all-star audio sound team. audio. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Uh, what is, can you tell me about the person, the, the person who does the voice? Like, what that is like when you're like, trying to get someone in a space, a mind, like a place to be able to like, feel like you just climbed a mountain that you've probably been trying to climb like over and over and over and over again. Like, what is that well, like? It's actually a, a super fun story too because we have found uh, an actress to play the character who is also doing all those effort sounds. Mm -hmm. We haven't revealed her name yet. We're going to talk about it later. Uh, she's also a composer. Mm -hmm. but, um, and then we just brought her over to Copenhagen where, um, where everybody is. All the, the team is in Denmark. The audio team is in Denmark. And she did like all those sessions like grunting and shouting and doing push-ups and we had to lock her in, in a room and she was actually, we actually had the bars, you know, like the exercise bars oh, wow. to do push-ups. She was doing upside down, she was exhausted. She did it's such like an amazing shape. job because we have, we need so much variation. Yeah. Mm. Uh, you don't realize it on a short trailer, but there is so many like, variations. Uh, 5,000 uh, breathing sounds. Oh, wow. I mean, like, I feel like there's only so much you can do to get somebody in a room and be like, okay, I'm going to pump you up. You just climbed a mountain. You just overcame this. Yeah. I'll scream. But like knowing that there has to be like this physical, like you need to go through this. You need to feel this. Yeah. I guess returning to, uh, to what Kurt touched on, how do you explore that narrative? Is it all mostly wordless and through those kind of like emotions? Or is there like, you know, do you hear her reflect in her own mind or does she ever speak to anyone else? Or is it just... Uh, yeah, we tried to avoid uh, her speaking to herself. We mm. wanted at the beginning, and then we realized it was kind of weird sometimes. So she's uh, breathing and screaming a lot, but then okay. she, there is also a story, a story part in the game, which mm. is quite strong, actually. And um, so it's, it's, uh, she's going to meet some characters along the okay. way. The right. mountain is mostly... Uh, yeah, solitary place, but still, she's going to meet some people. And uh, the story, we are working with uh, another um, huge talent from France, uh, Mathieu Bablé, a, a comic book uh, author, mm. very famous. And, uh, and he's also writing the story and uh, doing the art, uh, like all the concept art. Mm. And, um, yeah, it's going to be, uh, of course, uh, the story of why she does that and what she's ready to to sacrifice to make the, the climb. Yeah. 
It's really interesting. Going back to the idea of multiple uh, climbing games, we had Jusant recently. Did you play those other games? And were you like, oh man, who? Why did everyone do this right <laughs> yeah. now? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah Jusant. I think it's probably that we started before them somehow, or but we didn't know that they were going to release a climbing game yeah. be before us. Eventually, they are very different games. Yeah. Uh, I love Justin. I think it's a very beautiful game, but it's very different in the sense that it's uh, very poetic yeah. and uh, challenge-less in a way, because you cannot die in yeah. Justin, and you can die <laughs> in Karen, for sure. <laughs> yeah. is, like, it's, a, it's a very different take. Um, the climbing is very different as well. Um, so yeah, they have a kind of theme in common, in yeah. common, but very completely different games. Yeah, and we can't find an actual game to compare to. That's pretty hard for us as uh, developers because sometimes in within the team we just want to say, ah, you know, like this this feature in this other game. Yeah. Well, yeah, that was yeah. that was the that was the thing that I really picked up from the trailer and the gameplay. Um, you know, not it, it's the there's. You have your games that are. This might sound wrong, but like you have your games that are fun to play. That are like you're like you're there to engage. It's maybe even meditative. And I, I haven't played Karen, so it could be that sort of. But that it's it feels more like a that struggle and that journey and like the need to it's overcome an experience. to like want to do it. Um, and I think it's a good balance uh, in the midst of like other games. And then in any way, shape, or form to like you know that it's not just like. It's not entirely just you know. Yeah, it's 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 designed to be intense and um, and to build stakes for you as a player. You want to to really um, we want to create satisfaction, but that comes after a struggle. Yes. Mm. But it's also and we kind of discovered that by having players test to, to try the game, um, like a chill outdoor exploration right. game. There is that part yeah. also yeah. people want to explore and hike and enjoy the beautiful mm. scenery as well as they want to struggle on the wall for uh, hours. Yeah. Well, we have to wrap it up, but I just want to say it's been an awesome pleasure to have you both here. I'm very glad that you're able to like show this game off and be at like Summer Game Fest on the stage and show it. Uh, it was good to see in general just have a very like yesterday's show like had a really good wide scope yeah. of things and like that game in particular had a like I said, like a very like sweaty, just watching <laughs> yeah, it, just yeah. like, oh my God, oh my God, I can't wait. Audrey, Emmerich, it's been so nice having you. For those of you who are watching, oh my God, please, the honor is ours. Is, is the game on Steam to wishlist now? Yep, yep. So if you're interested, you can wishlist it. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, for those of you who are watching, stay tuned. We have a bunch of stuff, a bunch of more people coming on. Please, stick around. All right. See you later. Bye.